Guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Coding Paths, a YouTube channel dedicated to all you self-taught developers out there. And we like to talk about the different paths that you can use to get into a tech career, as well as the different paths that you can follow once you're here. So today's subject is, how do you learn to code when you're not a kid anymore? Right? When you're not a teenager, you're not in college, you're an adult with a family and a full-time job and all the responsibilities and things that come with being an adult. How do you do that, which already takes up seemingly all of your day, and learn to code, and specifically learn to code good enough where you can maybe switch careers? Let's talk about it. So the first thing I want to emphasize is that, and there's only going to be three tips, we're going to keep this short. The first thing I want to emphasize is that you are right that this is going to be a new commitment of time. It will require both reading and study and research and a lot of time on the, with your fingers on the keyboard. Um, I like to call coding a kinesthetic activity. Even after you learn all the theory and all of the book knowledge, if you will, uh, this is not an academic exercise. The majority of the time should be spent with your key, with your fingers on the keyboard, actually typing out code. In some cases, you'll be typing along with a tutorial. They'll say, hey, type this in your console, type this in your terminal, type this in your IDE. In other cases, you need to use the lessons that you learned and open a blank IDE and just go coding from scratch. But whatever the scenario is, it is a commitment of time. And the best suggestion I've come across with this is to use your space repetition, but don't space it out too much. What does that look like? Let's say I'm going to a boot camp, for instance, right? At the bare minimum, at the bare minimum, outside of class time, I've got to be on this computer, right, at least 30 minutes a day. This is bare minimum for six days a week. Now, that might be a little alarming to some of you. Hey, I had no plan on doing this six days a week. And, you know, I was going to just kind of do it, go hard on Saturday and then, you know, get some, you know, personal time and some me time. Let me tell you the issue with that. Because I've done that and it totally doesn't work. When you go and you spend three, four, five, six hours, let's just say on Saturday, because maybe you're off work, right? You have more time available. But then you don't, and maybe let's say you spend an hour on Sunday, right? And then you don't touch it until, when I say touch it, I mean like your curriculum or your tutorial or whatever, until let's say Wednesday or Thursday. The problem is when you come back to it, and this is particularly when you don't have a computer science background, it's not already part of your muscle memory. When you come back to it, you will find that you have forgotten a whole lot of the things that you just learned, which means you're now looking at whatever your tutorial was or whatever your classwork was, you have to kind of go back a lesson or two lessons and catch back up. If anybody out there has already gone through that, just leave me a comment because I know I'm not the only one. So you don't want to extend all this time between the time that you're working on code. You want to put something in it every day right? On the average, when I was in my boot camp situation and when I was self-taught, it was usually between one and two hours a day. Um, and then some cases, it'll be three or four hours a day. And there was a few select cases when I just did all-nighters, even at in my upper 40s, right? Um, I'm not suggesting that. That is not healthy. I'm just kind of describing what I did to make the transition myself because I'm a career transitioner. Uh, but at the end of the day, the main thing is you're putting consistent time in every day don't let a lot of times uh, lapse and even on your off day i said do it at least 30 minutes a day for six days a week even on that seventh day i would at least just read something just read something if it's no more than just reading a prior lesson just reinforce it because what you're doing is you as a boot camp student you as a self-taught um, student in computer science self-taught student in software engineering web development when you go out to that job force right this is how i think about it it's me and then there's these computer science students who have four years of education as well as they may have internships and this you know uh, litany of experience that they're going against and they have a certain level of knowledge that I'm trying to squeeze into six months or a year okay and so the way I do that and I'm gonna talk about this more in some other videos but one of the ways I do that is I have to really immerse myself in a way where I'm getting as much knowledge as I can. I'm filling in the gaps. I'm not only learning the syntax of my language. I'm trying to see how does web development work? How does it actually work on the internet? And get a little bit about networking, which has a little bit about security and a little bit about all these other pieces, things that would be either electives or even requirements in a computer science curriculum. I need to figure out how I can supplement those courses with my own type of learning. Second tip I want to give for you when you're trying to learn to code as a older adult or a seasoned adult is, and I steal this one from my good friend JC Smiley, 
Don't learn in a vacuum. Don't learn alone. All right. So let's look at the college model real quick. Let's say you go to a university and you're you're in Cal one freshman year, right? Calculus one. There's a hundred. There's two hundred, five hundred students in the class, right? The professor's cool. The class is cool. But what very often really helps to ground those lessons in is when they break it down to those smaller TA sessions, those ten to twenty students, and there's a TA and you have. A lot more personal attention. Very often the students are collaborating collaborating, and working together. And then what really nails it in for some people is even beyond that, having study hall and study sessions. Hey, it's me and three or four buddies and we just quiz each other and ask each other questions and we're, we're on the whiteboard and we're on the chalkboard and we kind of learn in a circular fashion or we learn in a group type fashion. There is so much to be gained from that. And then here you come and you're 20 something, 30 something, 40 something, right? Um, what do you do? I don't have a class. I don't have a professor. Um, what I can do, number one, if I'm in a boot camp, I can still find other like minded individuals and we can set up study sessions. Up, set up study sessions. I can't, I can't talk. We can set up study sessions, right? We can set up code alongs and code reviews with one another. We can do po pair programming with one another. You can still create these small TA-like sessions and get the benefit of learning in a group, right? It might not be all the time. You need to have a lot of time with, again, just you and the keyboard, but then there's certain questions that you can bring to the group and maybe this person knows the answer to what I had and I can help the person over there because often one of the greatest ways to learn is to teach someone else. And so finding small groups to learn with is often very beneficial, even in the older years or middle years, whatever. Um, and then beyond that, even if I'm not in a boot camp or even if I am, uh, finding meetups. Oh, I can talk about meetups forever. I'm gonna try to keep this video short. So much benefit from meetups and just going to places. Hey, I'm in a boot camp. We're learning C Sharp, but guess what? There's a C Sharp.net Azure um, user group right here in my city. Just start going. More than likely, they're gonna talk about things in the beginning that you don't understand at all. And that's perfectly fine. Tip for my friend George Spake, just get you a nice list of things to learn, right? Every term that you hear in those meetups, just make a nice little list in your bullet journal or on Evernote, wherever you keep your notes. And then in your spare time, you go and just one by one start learning those terms. While you're at the meetup, you're meeting people, you're talking about people. Hey, my name is Lawrence. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm really interested in C-sharp and the, uh, the exciting things going on with Azure right now. And I'm excited how uh, Microsoft is doing things with Xbox 360, not 365. Anyway, put your story out there and you may find people that are very willing to help you. So tip number two is don't learn in a vacuum. All right, guys, third and final tip when you're learning to code, how do you learn to code when you're no longer a young person, right? And this one's gonna be a little amorphous, a little, you know, not as tangible as the others, but I think it absolutely is just as important. And the reason I think it's important is because over and over again, I see blog posts, I read videos, I see, you know, Twitch videos about how to stay motivated, how to stay motivated when learning to code, how to stay motivated. And for a while it made sense to me, but after a while, it kind of doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, if I am um, eating dinner, we had a great dinner last night. Uh, my wife did great red beans and rice, and she kind of mashed the red beans where it kind of has that texture like Popeyes, and we had the, the sausage, and just, it was just fantastic. I had me a little piece of Jiffy Mix cornbread, nice and sweet like a piece of cake. I was good to go. No one had to motivate me to get that second bowl. Nobody. I got, I got one bowl, right? She prepared it for me. But when I was ready for my second plate, nobody had to motivate me. Nobody had to pump me up. Nobody had to give me, nobody had to give me reasons to go get my food. Okay? Because I knew what I wanted. And what happens a lot of time, people get into coding, they have an idea of what they want. That idea kind of gets pushed to the back because there's all this new stuff you're learning with languages and libraries and frameworks and syntax and, and data structures and algorithms and I got to build a project and what about my resume and you end up doing all the stuff and your reason for starting it in the first place kind of gets pushed to the background. Right, And then there's frustrating moments when things just don't work the way they should and errors come up that you can't seem to even find a Stack Overflow answer to. And all of that causes people to lose sight of the reason they started in the first place. So the way I want to suggest is my third way is keep your reason why right up front, right? 
keep your reason why right up front. Um, it was one of the success authors and success coaches, Tony Robbins, I read from him decades ago. Uh, if, you're, if you have a sufficient reason why, a sufficiently strong reason why, your mind and your body will figure out the how, okay? And so I'm gonna encourage you to keep that front of mind at all times. Why am I doing this, right? It could be something as simple as, I'm learning to code because my current job does not give me the time nor the money to enjoy my family I want, is not securing my future, and it's bringing unnecessary anxiety and stress. Therefore, I want to learn to code to get into an industry where I can afford myself back a level of time and financial freedom to enjoy the rest of my life, right? That's a personal one. Yours may be completely different, and that's fine. It's not about what the reason is. It's that you identify your reason and keep it front of mind. You might make it the background on your computer. You might make a big poster board and put it on the wall. You might make it the background on your phone. You might make it part of your morning routine. Uh, write it and throw it on the mirror in the bathroom. Whatever you have to do, particularly for when times get tough, you need some sort of mechanism to trigger and help remind you, why am I doing this the first place? Your, my, your why is your motivation, which means when you're watching these videos and reading blogs and things about how to stay motivated, you're getting tips from other people that respond to their psyche and their life and their lifestyle. And in some cases, they have a lifestyle that won't even match what you're going through. Right. It may be, uh, you know, some younger single person who's, you know, living in mama's basement. And here you are, wife, kids, mortgage, house, you know, all this stuff going on full-time job, part-time job, those motivations are gonna probably be a little different. So if you've begun learn to code, why did you do it? Why did you do it? Write that down, put it somewhere where you can remind yourself, this is what I'm going for. If you're into vision boards and things like that, get that going. Have some sort of a cue that when things get tough and you get a little discouraged, you can get back on track. Those are my three tips. This has gone a little bit longer than I planned. That keeps happening, I don't know why. Maybe I should start scripting these things, right? That's what the experts do. At any rate, hope you got something from it. See you guys soon. Guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Coding Pass, YouTube channel dedicated to all you self-taught developers out there. And we look to... Ooh.